Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at all the new mail features in macOS Ventura. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. There are a lot of new features in the Mac Mail app in macOS Ventura. Let's take a look at each one. First there's the undo function. So now when you go to send an email if you look at the bottom left you'll see an undo send button that will be there for a short period of time. Click that and then the mail composition window comes back and the mail isn't sent. Now the way this works is very simple. The mail actually isn't sent when you hit the send button. Instead there's a delay and if you hit the undo button before the delay the send never happens. This is similar to how other email apps do an undo send. Because the way email works once the email is actually sent it goes off of your service whether that's iCloud, Gmail or whatever. It goes out to the internet and to somebody else's service. So there's no way to call it back. Now you can change the delay amount by going to Mail Settings and then under Composing you could look for the Undo Send Delay. You can set it to 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds or turn it off if you'd rather have email send right away and remove the Undo function completely. Now we also have the ability to send at a later time. So instead of just clicking the Send button here you can click this little menu next to it and you get the option to Send Now or Send 9 p.m. tonight or Send Later. If you choose Send Later you can pick any date and any time that you want and schedule the email to send. When you do this the Mail app is going to be what sends the email. It doesn't go after the server or anything. So of course your Mac needs to be on else it can't actually perform this action. But it's okay if the Mail app isn't running or if your Mac is asleep. It will still send. And of course your Mac must be online in order to send email in the first place. So if your Mac happens to be offline when the time comes it's not going to be able to send the email until you're back online. And if you schedule it to send later like this then you'll see it appear here on the left under Send Later. You can select that little temporary mailbox that appears there. Go to the message and you'll see this email will be sent and edit that and change the time. Or if you change your mind you can simply delete the message completely. Now those features are very useful and very straightforward. But the next two features not so much. First we've got the Remind Me feature. So let's say you get an email like this in your inbox. And you can't deal with it right now. You'd rather get a reminder at some point later on. You can go to Message, Remind Me, and you can have a reminder set in an hour, tonight, tomorrow, or Remind Me Later, and then set a time to get a reminder. But you don't actually really get a reminder for this. This isn't related to the Reminders app. What will happen is you see this little clock appear here in the list. You'll see a little Remind Me list that appears here as long as you have at least one message with this set. The message itself will have this at the top telling you what time you're going to get reminded. You can go to Edit and you can remove the reminder if you want. But all that happens at the time of the reminder is the message will move back to the top of your inbox. So in my case here I just have one message in the inbox. It's not going to make any difference. But if I say had 30 messages in my inbox and this was at the bottom then after the Remind Me time this would move to the top. I'd still have to be looking at my inbox to even notice this change. So this is not really useful for those of us that keep a clean inbox. But if you do have a messy inbox with lots of stuff in there you can use this to have something go to the top after a period of time. Now what makes this even less useful is the fact that this has to remain in the inbox for this to work. So if I were to archive this message it's no longer there in Remind Me and it no longer has that indicator. If I were to bring it back into my inbox it gets back the Remind Me indicator here although it doesn't appear in any special list anymore. This would be so much more useful if these messages actually disappeared from the inbox and only were in Remind Me. Then it could be a way for you to clear out your inbox and have messages go back into it after a period of time. Or at least let you archive these messages and have them go back into your inbox when the time arrives. Note you can edit the reminder there and remove the reminder completely like that to return it to normal. Now the follow-up feature is even less useful. The follow-up feature only works on messages that you've sent. And the idea is you send a message like this where maybe you're asking a question. And if you haven't gotten a response then 
this message, the message you've sent, may appear in your inbox even though it's not an incoming message. It's one you've sent after a period of time. But here's the thing. You can't set a message to have a follow-up. It has to happen automatically. So the Mail app is looking at the language in your message, figuring out which messages should have a follow-up and also determining when that follow-up should appear and then just doing it automatically. There's no way to manually say, yes, I definitely need a follow-up for this message and no, I don't need a follow-up for this one. And as of yet, I haven't seen a single message showing up as a follow-up for me. If you do start to see messages that are set to follow-up and you're not finding this useful, you can go to Mail Settings General and there's a way to switch this off. Now whether we like to admit it or not, from time to time we make a mistake when sending an email. Like for instance forgetting to include an attachment. What's worse is when we actually mention in the message that there's an attachment but we forget to include it. Well Mail is now smart enough to actually see that we've mentioned an attachment and when we go to Send it's going to give us a warning. Probably at some point you've done this and having this little warning will be really nice. And supposedly this feature also works with recipients. If it determines from what you've written that somebody else should be included in the message then it will prompt you for that as well. And note that these features only work right now if your language is set to English. Now another improvement to Mail is Search. So there are two things that are improved here. One's easy to see. The other not so easy. If you start a search for something it's supposed to give you richer suggestions here on the right. Now it definitely does look different here in Ventura than it does in Monterey. But I'm having a hard time seeing how it's any better. It gives you the ability to narrow by subject or by attachment and it gives you some suggestions of things that you could be looking for. But we had that in Monterey as well so it's a little unclear about how the search suggestions are any better. But the one thing it definitely does do is help with misspellings. For instance if I misspell plans you could see how it still finds email messages that have that word in it. It even also flags some that have the word plus in them. This feature also only works if your language is set to English, at least for now. Another new feature is rich links. So here I've got a message I'm composing. Let's say I want to include a URL, like for this page here. So I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to paste it in. Notice how it changes to be a rich link. It's taking the key photo from that page and displaying it here and a nice little title and what website it's from. This is how it's worked for a little while in Messages. This is really nice but if you'd rather it just stay plain links you can click here and convert to plain link. Now another new feature is a really interesting security feature that's going to take some time for it to become useful. It's about using this BIMI support. This will allow companies to basically certify their email as being official email and then using a special logo they provide that will then appear in Mail. A variety of other third party Mail systems have already adopted this. And I haven't seen it in action yet but I believe the idea is that you would see the official logo appear here. Now normally you'd see initials here by default but you'd also see the image of anybody that's in your contacts. But if a company sends you a message and is using this system and has their email certified as being authentic then you should see their logo appear here. You'll probably also see it if you turn on the show contact photo for the list. You'll probably also see it here. So the idea would be that say if you got an email from your bank you would see the bank logo there even though you haven't added the bank logo to your contacts. And as you grow used to seeing that over time as the logo appearing next to your bank emails when you get a fake malicious email pretending to be from your bank you wouldn't see that it wouldn't have that certification so you would see the regular initials there and hopefully this will alert you to the fact that it's not really coming from the source you think. So while it's hard to find now I expect to see this more and more over the next year as companies start to use this system. So that's a look at all the new mail features. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.